Hi and welcome back to Cheeky Crypto. Today guys we're going to be jumping down into the world of BTC, taking a look at what's been going on most recently with the price action and what I would expect to happen next. In the last couple of hours we've seen some interesting volatility with some wicks up high, pulling back down and being again trading sideways where we are. So I want to kind of talk about what structures uh, this might mean for BTC and all that wonderful stuff. As I get into it, Hit the like button, I do appreciate that. If you're new, subscribe, stay up to date with everything. And don't forget, join us in Discord. It's a centralized hub of everything Cheeky Crypto. And, you know, it's the first place that we go and inform people. So go ahead, check it out in the description below. It can be a little bit fiddly. It's high security. Um, we do this to make sure that you are as safe as possible. And we kick out any potential scammers and, um, you know, anyone who is a bot or anything like that. We get rid of all those nonsense. And so it's a limited server uh, and it is designed to keep you as safe as possible. Join it. Links in the description below. Let's make a start with this. Bitcoin paired up with the USDT on the hourly chart. Binance is the data source. Now, following on from the stream that we did on Twitch this morning, I was talking about potential structures, and it's very, very difficult to kind of get a good steer as to what is going on. There's multiple different ways of looking at it. And the wick that we just had one second ago, I say a second ago, but uh, in the last hour, so here it actually was about six minutes ago, I saw this move up and then pull all the way back down. This actually creates an invalidation on this uh, particular structure of this ABC just here. So I can go ahead and delete that. So that removes one of the scenarios out of play and now we can focus in on a couple of the others now for the most part we have this move to the downside this move to the upside this one being higher than this b wave here as well i'm happy to put that one to bed as well and we can kind of say that's not likely to occur instead it looks like and this is a bit difficult because we are still experiencing a lot of volatility here but it does look like we are probably going to be approaching that uh, larger a b and c structure back up into the supply zone there let me just go ahead and change this back into yellow so it's a little bit easier to see and so it looks like this now if i grab my fibs and i run the fib from the high point down to our low point move it over to our bounce and I'm probably going to just have to zoom in on this for one second let me just see if I can get this right onto the right level there let's go put that right there and put the b wave back and drop the b wave down there there we go and just zoom this back out we can kind of see that our one-to-one -one ratio is actually kind of hiding right in here uh, and you can kind of see it right up there top there so inside this yellow box we have this area here right we're talking about the 786 to the 882 those are inside this supply zone the one-to-one is actually right up here on my 18,444 line uh, dollar line that's actually an area that we've been talking about in the discord for a little bit and yeah that's an interesting kind of take that could be where we end up going with that being said though that would just be our one-to-one -one ratio i'll remove that off there we want to kind of reflect on this we haven't really had a decent pull to the downside just yet and instead we moved up before pulling back down we'll continue to go sideways this makes this a bit of a difficult read and there's a couple of different ways of looking at it, it could be zigzag uh, and then we pull back down then we push back up i don't really know how we're going to get there the structure is not clear within here yet um, but I do think this is the most likely scenario, avoiding the double bottom at the moment, uh, just at the bottom here. With all this being said, though, this does put us at a precarious position and considering these five waves down here and this kind of sideways trading. This is a ranging market. This is the kind of stuff you avoid. You don't want to get stuck inside a ranging market. And particularly uh, what I mean by this is we're, we're kind of trading down in this low 15s up to the high kind of 18s. We're bouncing around. Now, there's a little bit of volatility in here. You can kind of take advantage of that. Um, but essentially, this is kind of really difficult and people get trapped out quite a bit um, and they get liquidated quite quickly here because it, when you're ranging you're not really trending you're not really going in one particular direction you're just bouncing around and these are generally what most uh, professional traders try to avoid they try to avoid these particular situations and um, so although i do think we have that high probability of a move to the upside there at least that's more confident in that now than I was this morning. Uh, I want to be a little bit cautious still to say that this is a range in market um, and we can come right back down again before moving anywhere near that upper side. So if you're going to put a stop loss on here um, and you're going to be looking at going long on a position on, on BTC, for example, you're going to want to give this a lot of space to breathe, in my opinion. With that being said, there's still a lot of fallout in terms of everything FTX and, and Alameda Research and, of course, everyone affiliated with that. There's several exchanges that are of concern still. Uh, there's definitely a lot of worry in the space and rightfully so because if you're holding cryptocurrency assets on exchanges you are putting yourself at an unnecessary risk and um, so coming kind of you can after like self-custody your own cryptocurrency it's very very important uh, i talk about this pretty much in every single video at this particular point in time and um, because it's that important uh we we like ledger hardware wallets we are affiliated with them we get a kickback on the sales of that just be absolutely clear there's a link in the description below if you're looking for a hardware wallet and yes it does benefit the channel if you do use that link um, 
Um, there are other hardware wallets out there though, so do a lot do a lot of your own research. We use the Ledger because A, they seem the most affordable and you get a lot of bang for your buck um, in terms of functionality, hardware wallet, uh, and the actual cost of the units themselves. So just bear that in mind. There are other options out there as well, though. Um, so do your research. Don't just go FOMOing into anything, including hardware wallets. But we like the Ledger, as I said. And there is an affiliate link in the description below if you haven't yet got one. Uh, Self-custody is going to be key. Keeping your assets off these exchanges during these uncertain times. Um, and I'll probably talk more about that later on in another video. Uh, more about kind of the ins and the outs of what's been going on most recently in the crypto industry. Um, for Bitcoin here... My expectations are that we are to move upwards, but be very, very cautious, specifically if we're going to be doing any short-term trading as this is ranging, and I don't like a ranging market. That is not a good idea. Personally, you want to make sure that you are aligned to uh, whether we are trending or not. And here you can see we've got these two um, EMA lines. This is just on the hourly chart. We've been testing this uh, this 100 EMA. We got rejected from it here. So we could find suppression. We could find that this is a rejection point. And this might be a good place to then start thinking about a move to the downside. If we start moving up and start crossing these EMAs on this hourly chart, we're going to potentially end up in the kind of sideways trading that we had seen pretty much from the June lows uh, throughout. And it's basically very, very messy. We don't like those. What we like to do is we like to see a good, clear directional move. And we like to take advantage of that. Right now, we're not really getting those in this particular picture. So just be a little bit cautious on that if i throw the htf liquidity on here you can see there's a lot of liquidity up here as people were shorting the market that's a pretty good and attractive proposition for the market makers considering they've been bleeding money recently they might want to take advantage of those liquidations on the pause of that on the reverse of that we can of course see there's liquidity right down here on the double bottom um, but it's not as much as what is up here so uh, my, my opinion we are likely to move on up and we're likely to grab that liquidity take advantage of that um, other than that order block wise still sat down here at that low 15s that hasn't changed sell order blocks are far too high not likely to get hit so for the most part not too concerned about those uh, for the most part yeah my expectations are that we move up but do expect it to be choppy. I'm not expecting straight line moves to the upside. From an overbought and oversold position, we can see that the one and four hour charts are overbought. So this entire thing that I've been talking about could entirely break down and at a whim. Uh, that's how bad this crypto space is right now. Structure is very, very difficult to read. Uh, overbought on the one and the four hour. Okay, so that basically means that we're running out of momentum to the upside. On the eight hour, we're not yet there. So that could spur us up in towards our supply zone into this little purse, uh, spurge to the upside, get, get around that liquidity and then tank from there. So just be a little bit aware of that. The daily chart still oversold. I'm not too concerned. But for the most part, we are definitely going to be experiencing some volatility in the uh, kind of short term. I'm definitely thinking this is going to happen within the next 24 hours or so. Uh, we should experience a lot more volatility here when it comes to crypto. Don't be surprised if tomorrow is going to be a pretty bloody day in the market uh, with a lot of blood spilt in the streets. And of course, right now, I'm not really buying. And I don't think it's wise to do so. I think there's going to be some much, much bigger discounts in the near future. Uh, and therefore, kind of getting your crypto off the exchanges or getting um, your stable coins converted into fiat and put back into the banks. However you want to do it, lots of different ways. Join us in Discord for more details on all those various different ways of kind of keeping yourself protected as much as possible during these moments of uncertainty. Guys, I'm going to leave this video right there. If you found it useful, smash the like button. I do appreciate that. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, tap the bell, select all the notifications. And in doing so, you will be kept up to date with absolutely everything that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. Don't forget, guys, join us in the Discord server. Links in the description below. Yes, it's complicated to get in. Yes, it requires a phone verification. Yes, that is designed to keep the scammers out. And we do kick out anyone that we suspect of being a scammer. So guys, with that said, have a fantastic day and I'll catch you in the next one.